I wasn't there either, but my well, we saw the fire. This is the 20th day of August. Was it Easter Sunday? 2009. We got a bunch of ladies here going to talk I about the. Because see, my dad delivered milk. To just a minute. And he brought milk. We're going to talk about the Baptist Church fire. All right. And the number is one six three seven. One six three seven is the number on the picture, and Marjorie Carter's got stories to tell. Go for it. Well, I I don't know really too much about it because I lived seven miles out in the country. And uh, I can remember my dad took milk to town, and we saw the fire, or the, the, the uh, smoke from home, because we could see the rapids. And anyway, when he came home, he said that the Baptist church had burned. And that is fact, that is actually all I know about. It. I would have been, it was in 34? That's, I think September you said 34. Huh? And when? September the 16th. September the 16th. Okay, see, I'd only been seven years old. But I, I remember. Then we have a Methodist church pre any kind of additions to it. At number 1638. Methodist? Yeah, John Pass that over there. No discussion, we'll move on. Is that wrong? Well, we're just scanning and giving them all back to you. Well, are these a donation or are these to be scanned? Well, some of them are just... You're not gossiping, ladies. You need to talk loud for the microphone on here, and I'd like to hear oh, the Grant Ewing bit again. A Here's a Grant water Ewing. Power okay. dam. This Grant Ewing is 1641. Look at the horse and buggy. <laughs> you guys can... Please talk louder about Grant Ewing for the camera. Take it when? This is the number photograph number 1641. Oh, I thought you said it was a date. Okay. We don't know that it, he's drilling, that he he's was drilling a well for drill. something. Yeah, he was a well drawer, so he's either drilling for water probably. I suppose. Well, I imagine that's what he was. was a, for it wouldn't water. be oil. It wouldn't uh -huh. be oil because he would oh, have no. that different kind of stuff for it. And that. Grant Ewing lived where? Down I on South know. Main, didn't he? Yeah, right there know. where we bought that house. Yeah, where Carol Kurtz lives. Mm -hmm. He had two, three lots there. Cool. And that fallen down barn in the back <laughs> was his Although shop. John Ewing lived down in there too, didn't he, John Ewing? That was his brother. Now we have the, num the p interior of the Episcopal Church and it's number 1642 and they were talking about that also. Well, yeah, it, it was earth. bought and I can't remember what church it was. Uh, what did you think it was? Well, something brethren. I don't know okay. if it was United Brethren. A church, you know, I thought, built that and I meant building it. and they, I don't know how many years, had services there and then I guess their congregation just fell apart or something, and so they sold that to the Episcopal Church, but I don't know what year. It was sometime before the turn of the century, before the ninth, before the 20th century. And then we're in the 1880s. Probably. And then these uh, uh, light fixtures up here, something about those. Yeah, those on there, they're gas, um, yes, you know what I mean. And when we bought the manse, up in the attic was a whole bunch of that stuff that they had taken out of the church when they electrified it finally. And I suppose that the lights that are there now are probably the same ones that they put in then. And that was in 55? Four. 54? Well, that's when we bought the manse, but the this, manse. Was, oh. this was done well, way back. Well, that book that we were talking about, if it is Emma Porter, my grandmother and grandfather got married in 1900. And so she had to have written that after that is what mm -hmm, I'm getting mm -hmm, at, mm -hmm. and she was talking about the, their belonging to whatever church that church. was. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm presuming... It didn't happen then until like in 19-something. Yeah. Okay. okay, and then we have the... That's another we have that Gibson, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of... Well, I don't, we don't, I don't believe we have one with all these guys Ooh, not that much. many. Let no, me see. Uh -uh. I'll get that. Get the number get that one. 
That's a that's 16 been a reprint, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number 1643. And so does anybody recognize where that one? I bet it is that American one. It's making me wonder. But it feels kind of like it, huh? Is this one out south of town? The American? Oh, that's U.S. Gypsum. And it's like a stone archway or something? Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah. But they probably all pretty much had something like that on them, didn't they? Build up that way. No matter which one it was. Oh, there's just a different, yeah, just a different view of it. That's why. Come on, guys, speak up. Tell me who you are. <laughs> well, in order to have that view, it would have been, of course, it could have been down there, too. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking this paper, was taken I'm, I'm from not down sure. I don't know when this was taken. Of the hill. Mm -hmm. Looking at Probably in the 30s. Side. And this is here up on top, uh, right? top of the hill, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. I was looking, there is, there's a house. Yeah, and here it is closer. Uh huh. I think oh, I that was a page of there. There's something here. Western plaster. Mm. That's what it says right here. Western plaster. Yeah. Mm. So wherever that was at. 1644, and it's a, the caption at the bottom says, Big Blue River at Riverside Park, Blue Rapids, Kansas. Mm. And it talks about, there's a boat, this is the one here, yeah, that one there. That, uh, Maxine, do you want to talk about the, there's a little kid seeing the boats here on this picture here. I'd Just, like to, but I don't know anything about it. <laughs> well, you were talking about the boats that were behind the horse farms, and it was so pretty down in there. Oh, well, I didn't mind the boats, that the water was so pretty. The water, okay. The river was beautiful hot come around there. Well, there's a good picture. We scanned it this morning of that. Mm -hmm. And No, I don't remember any boats to speak of on it. Well, Broken Nick used to have a boat that was... Now, you mean a big boat, boat or a, ca a canoe or a um, rowboat or something like that? They, they carried people in them. Oh. An excursion I boat. don't remember that. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. six, seven people. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that either. Oh. Yeah. We were... The Overstreet? The Overstreet family. Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, whether this is the same family, I don't no, know. No, I went large. <laughs> but my grandfather and grandmother lived, and, well, my grandfather worked for J.R. Morgan out on the Morgan Ranch, and they lived in a small house down just below the hill. And my mother, I've he heard her talk about it several times, that they had to walk to school, and on their way, they would pick up the Overstreet kids, or that is, they would come out mm -hmm. and meet them, and they would all go to school together, walk together, and then they would come home together. But that's about all that she said, outside of they were such nice children. They You're not sure where the Overstreet's house was? No, I do not know. I don't have any idea. It's all above, like, above that railroad track. It'd have to be. There were several houses there, like where, where Pam Ball is, you know, there were several houses in there, and the Pennington house was across the street there where they've got the old uh, depot now. So I, uh, she never did say, and you know, I wasn't all that interested to find out, and I never did ask her, but I know she said they used to play with them too. They would come up there. And well, you know, play. that's where we think the, and we're pretty sure we know that the, the church, the black church was there on that corner down there, you know, where the it got the greenhouse things. Oh, really? So that would be, that was kind of the black area mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. So probably along in there somewhere is where they picked them up. I don't think there were too many families. That was the only one she ever mentioned was Overstreet. But perhaps that's because that was the children yeah. that they walked was to school Was that your mother or grandmother? My, my mother. <coughs> your mother. Mm -hmm. she and what's your mother's her. name? When my mom went to school here in the third, fourth grade, she said there were a lot of black children in her mm -hmm. class. Yeah. 
My mother's name was Cummings, her last name, Gladys Cummings. I saw it. And Cummings, Harvey Cummings, Cummings is the one that worked. That was her dad, Harvey Cummings. Where, where was the house that he lived in? Did you say? Is it, where, it was uh, on the Morgan well, Ranch? Well, the big Morgan house set up on the mm -hmm. hill, and then you came down, and there was a small house that sat just at the end of the driveway, and that's where my uh, folk, my grandparents lived. And. Uh, I don't know how long the house was there. Of course, see, that was back when my mother, my mother was born in 1902. So you see that, and she was in grade school. It was torn down in 1976. 1976. Because we lived out there when it was torn down. Is that I right? I remember. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's about all I know about it. Come on, don't worry. <clears throat> We've got Marjorie Carter here on the 20th day of August of 2009, and she's looking through the White Way suitcase that uh, was donated by the Bigham family after Angeline's untimely choice to leave us. <laughs> Marjorie thinks she's the only one left of the original or the older members of the White Way Club. The original one. Original yes. one. Did you find an article about the date that it first started? Yeah, I'm what to do with it. Sure. Yes, <clears throat> it was organized in uh, May the 18th, 1922, and it gives the list of the charter members of the club. Uh, do you want them named? If you want to. Okay, well, there's not too many, but okay. Mrs. Walter Bigham, Mrs. Tom Fincham, Miss Vida Fincham, Mrs. Will Fincham, Mrs. Albert Hopper, Mrs. John Nason, Mrs. Alfred Steiner, Mrs. Marion Summers, Mrs. Ed Watkins, Mrs. Rod Weeks, Mrs. James Wilson, Mrs. Joe Wilson, Miss Bessie Wilson, and Mrs. Charles Strange. That, they were the ones that were there. It was organized on May the 18th, and I was born May the 14th. But my mother evidently couldn't make it that day because <laughs> I was just four days old. And so I was actually the first club baby uh, of the organization. So, um, and um, they were uh, the present, they had 15 members for the two. And um, I was going through the books yesterday that I had, and they had all the way from 20 down to about seven uh, members over the, over the years. And what but, was uh, it that brought them together? Uh, well, they met um, at um, Mrs. James Wilson's house, Jim Wilson. And that is uh, uh, Jim Wilson that lives out, you know, Jim. Uh, that was his mother. Uh, but they didn't meet there every no, time, no. did they? Excuse me, not Jim Wilson, no. Jim Wilson was uh, his grandfather. His grandmother would be Mrs. James. And, um, and that's where his mother was Vida Wilson, George Wilson. So anyway, but they, they of course, I don't remember much about the early days. And, um, but I did not become a member until, oh, I think I was out of high school before I became a member. In fact, I uh, became a member just before I was married in 41. And uh, then I was a member until we, we moved away then in 57. So, and then from 57 on, I really didn't know too much about them. When I'd come to see my mom, I would visit. But, uh, and through the years they had, uh, actually all the members were people that lived along the White Way Club, the White Way, the old White Way Road, that's what they called that. Uh, number nine was uh, White Way, and that was how come it was named the White Way Country Club because it was all the people along there, clear almost to Frankfurt, but not quite to Frankfurt was our members, and uh, as far west as um, well, let's see, Cavandas I think probably lived about maybe Irwin Bigham's. I don't remember what was the, the one farthest west that we went. Then eventually we some in town jo joined too, so we had quite a f they had quite a few members. And what did and you do at your meetings? They <clears throat> there were various things that they did. Uh, 
they sewed. The hostess, were, they met every other week, two, two, two meetings a month. And the hostess would, okay, if she'd have tea towels to him, or if she'd have patching, we have done patching for them. And of course, living on the farm, you had a lot of patching to do. And they would get work for the members to do. And then they would have entertainment of some sort. Uh, and always when there was a new member joined, they would have initiation, they called it. And one of their favorite ones was they had to ride a goat. And it happened, and I remember it, I was there, uh, it was at my mother's house, and we had a goat, I don't know how come, but we did. And uh, I can remember that, and I don't remember who it was that had to ride the goat, but she joined club, and we just had more fun. It, was, it wasn't a serious club, I mean, you know, we just went to, for, so the ladies could get together and, and tell what they had done and all about it, and, uh, and um, they had, um, let's see, um, they had picnics, we had a lot of picnics and get-togethers and uh, card parties. We would go, the people that had the largest house would have a card party. And of course when there were 22 members or more, or mm -hmm. so, uh, there were all, because the husbands, and they bring all the kids, and because they all had children, and uh, it was, um, then uh, they uh, they bought. Um, let's see. I'm trying to. You should have warned me about this. <laughs> um, they had masquerade masquerade parties at Halloween, and they'd have all kinds, like I say, all kinds of parties. And then they um, they played bingo and just anything to, you know, in those days, housewives had a hard road to hoe, actually. And it would be an afternoon that they could get together and talk about their kids and anything that was of value. And like I say, they did work for all the hostesses if they had it, had anything to do. And they always served a lunch. Some members would try to outdo others. You know how that went. And uh, but we just had a good song. Uh, the club song was composed uh, by Geraldine Foreman in 1923 and uh, and I, I don't remember because see I left in 41 I left Blue Rapids and um, I wasn't a member then until oh, later on uh, we moved